Welcome back. This is going to be a follow-up to my How to Rig a Gun in Blender tutorial, but this time I'll be showing you how to kitbash this AK. This will first involve adding simple attachments, then graduate up to a complete overhaul of the entire gun. By the end of this video, you'll have a completely modern and tactical AKS-74U, which you'll be able to fully accessorize to your heart's content. All of the assets used in this video are completely free to download, so please use the links in the description and follow along. Now, let's download our first model. So the first thing I want to change about this AK is its magazine. You can see that the author has given this AK a curved magazine, which is similar to the 7.62 caliber magazines found on the AKM type rifles. This is incorrect as the AK-74 variants use the 545 caliber magazines, which have a much lighter curve. So how do we change this? The first thing we're going to do is make a copy of our rigged gun project from the previous video. Rename that copy to Kitbash Gun Project. Next, create a new folder and call it Modifications. This will house all of the extra 3D models which we'll be downloading for this project. Let's head over to Sketchfab, where we'll find this DLS-10 magazine by Heavy Payload. Download it and unzip it into your Modifications folder. Then navigate to the model file and copy its URL. Now, let's open up our new Blender scene. Create a new folder in your AK's collection and call it AKS-74U Mods. Use the URL to import the magazine into your scene. Resize it so it's big enough to see. To make sure the magazine is scaled accurately, we're going to import an image file of an AKS-74U into our scene. Use X-ray mode to line the image up with the gun model so they overlap as much as possible. Now hide the original magazine and bring in the new one. Resize and position it so it overlaps the image. Quick side note, make sure the magazine catch is set to the locked position. Now head into the shader workspace. Connect all the textures to the base material, so it looks like this. Once done, you'll have a fully textured magazine. But let's take it one step further. Let's give this magazine the iconic orange Bakelite look. Bring in a reference image, then add a color ramp node to the base color. Use the eyedropper tool to select individual colors from the reference image, and rearrange the pins until you have a near matching result. Add in a hue saturation node, and adjust the sliders to change the overall look of your magazine. I chose to make mine more aged by desaturating and darkening it. By the end, you should have a node tree which looks like this. Next up, we need to add in the metal segments of the magazine. Isolate the model, then go to edit mode. Face select the magazine well, and the rim at the bottom. Make sure not to miss any faces during the selection process. Then, go to the material tab, and add a new material. Select the magazine's material, which will be called default. Press the copy button to create a duplicate of that material, then press assign to apply that material to the faces you have selected. Delete the color ramp and the hue to return the duplicated material to its original state. Turn up the metallic value to give the metal more shine. If you want more control over the color, add an RGB curve node. Hold the curve down slightly to give the metal a darker, worn look. And that will be it for the magazine. Now delete the reference images and rename the new object to 545 Magazine. Don't forget to rename the magazine's materials as well. Next up, let's add a silencer. We'll be using this PBS4 by Volta Jansen 1. Just like before, download it and import it into your scene. Zoom in on the AK's muzzle brake. Go to edit mode and face select it. Then press P to bring up the separation menu and click selection. Rename that new object to Muzzle. Now let's move the silencer into position. Let's bring in another reference image to get the scale as accurate as possible. Once we are done, we will again return to shader mode and connect all the textures to the base material. I don't really like the purple hue of this silencer, so I'm going to add a hue node to the base color and desaturate it. 
Now let's spin around and take a look at the back of the rifle. Unfold the stock and you'll see a side mount. To give us more options with continuity, we can face select and separate this from the main gun object. Then rename it to side rail. This will give us the option to hide the side mount, allowing you to switch between the more common AKS-74U and the rarer AKS-74UN variant. Now let's go back to Sketchfab. This time, we'll be downloading this PSO-1 scope. Import that model into your scene, then line it up with the side rail. Make sure the middle pin on the scope's clamp lines up with the trench on the side rail. That will be the visual indication that the model is correctly scaled. Also, make sure the scope is hugging the side rail and is not free floating. Finally, connect all the textures for all three materials on the scope. Rename that object to PSU Scope, and that'll be it. Now let's weight paint these attachments to the armature. First, select all the attachments we imported, then lastly, select the gun object. Hit Ctrl L and copy modifier. That will give all the attachments the AK's armature modifier. Now select the armature and then one of the attachments. Go to weight paint mode and select the anchor bone. Set the weight value to 1, then press Ctrl X to fill the attachment. Make sure the new magazine is weight painted to the magazine bone. Once done, go to pose mode and check that everything is weight painted correctly. Now, let's do some minor cosmetic changes to our AK. Hide all the attachments and go to the shading workspace. Go to edit mode and face select the handguard. Separate that from the mesh, then do the same for the pistol grip. Go over to the Material tab and hit the Copy button for both the handguard and the pistol grip. Now we can alter the textures on just these segments without affecting the overall model. On the handguard, drop a hue saturation node on the base color. Now let's alter the color on the handguard so it looks more wooden. For more control, we can also add in an RGB curve to increase the wood's contrast. For the pistol grip, I'm going to replace its plum color with a dark gray. Once you're done, rename both these objects to handguard and pistol grip. Now we're going to move to the final section of this video, which will involve completely rebuilding this gun so it represents something more tactical. To do this, we'll be downloading the CP98 Custom Mark 1 by Heavy Payload. This will be the base model which we will be sampling from for our overall kit bash. Download it and extract it. When you extract it, you'll get a warning telling you that the texture files have similar names. This is because the author hasn't given the textures unique names. For now, just press auto rename. In your Blender scene, create a new folder and call it CP98. Then go to File, OBJ, and import that model. Once it's imported, resize the model so it's the same size as the AK. Then go to the Shader workspace. The model will be broken up into four pieces. Each piece will represent a different material. Since the textures had to be auto-named, it's going to be a little difficult to find the correct textures for each segment of this model. If you ever find yourself in this situation, first import all the color maps, then connect each one, one at a time, until you find the one which matches. When you find the matching texture, take a look at its pattern, then find the AO, Metallic, Roughness, and Normal map which match that pattern. To make things easier for you, these are the texture patterns for all four parts. Don't forget to set the specular value to 0 0.3 if your model is lacking some shine. Once you're done texturing, we can start field stripping this model in preparation for the kit bashing process. Go to edit mode and start face selecting components of the model, then separate them. We'll want to separate the stock, the pistol grip, the handguard, the Picatinny rails, the attachments connected to those rails, and finally, the high capacity magazine. Make sure to join together detached segments that make up a component.
Once you are done, sort all these components into collections for more ease of use. Make one for the receiver, handguard, and stock. Temporarily hide the collections to see if you've missed anything. Now unhide everything and rename all these collections so they represent their contents. Now we can start kitbashing this AKS-74U. We'll start with the front and progressively work our way to the back. First, separate the AK's gas block, then select and hide the entire forward section. Go to the handguard collection, right-click, and press Select Objects. Now, move all these pieces down and line them up with the AK's receiver so they slot into position. If you find leftover pieces of the original handguard, face select and separate, then rejoin them with the original handguard. Once you're done aligning, zoom out. You'll see your AK has become substantially more modern. Let's keep kitbashing. Grab the high capacity magazine and align that with the original magazine. You'll see that the new mag is clipping through the dimple in the model. Simply shrink the overall size of the mag until it's no longer clipping. Once you're done, grab the new pistol grip and align that with the original pistol grip and make sure it overlaps. Now finally, let's attach the new stock. This one will require some creative liberties on how it could be attached. So feel free to experiment. For me personally, I'm going to slot it into the gap used by the original collapsible stock. You can now hide the leftover pieces. Now, we have a fully modernized tactical AKS-74U. But it's just missing one more thing. What modern weapon would not be complete without the iconic EOTech holographic sight? We'll be using this one by Volta Johnson. Import it into your scene and make sure it's named correctly and has its own collection. Now we just need to align it so it rests on top of the Picatinny rails. It's quite easy to find the correct scale as you just need to resize it so the site's rail slot aligns perfectly with the rails on the handguard. Once that's done, you can begin connecting the textures to the materials on the site. For the glass, use a high transmission value mixed with a low alpha value. For the material called sight, set its alpha value to zero to make it invisible as we don't need the reticle. And that will be it for adding in the EOTech holographic sight. To keep things organized, rename certain objects which you might mix and match with in a future project, such as the red dot sight or the front grip. Now finally, when it comes to rigging this model, because of the sheer amount of objects we've added, if we were going to individually weight paint all of these, it would take forever. So instead, I recommend blanket parenting all of these models to the anchor bone. Make sure the extended mag is parented to the magazine bone. Parenting isn't as secure as weight painting, but it's a much faster method for rigging when working with a model you're heavily customizing. Now feel free to mix and match using the collections we set up, or maybe even find your own models to import. There are plenty more free weapon models in Sketchfab, so take what you've learned here and apply it. Your options are pretty much endless. Now if you want to learn how to kitbash a character, then please click on the playlist link and check it out. <laughs>